In this video I'm going to be walking through uh, the process of creating a conceptual landscape uh, using the five layer of value method. So we're going to create a landscape that is based on five different layers of value with the closest being the darkest and then white being the furthest back or the sky in the background. Uh, so I have a open canvas here ready to work with and what I'm going to do uh, before I jump too far ahead of myself here I'm going to create a new layer on top and this is going to be my sketch that I'll lay underneath and this on this is where all of my value is going to go after I've completed just a basic rough sketch uh, now this is going to utilize uh, some natural things that we see in the physical world and then also some exaggerated things to make this kind of a fantasy style landscape so it's going to have uh, desert landscape and then giant mushrooms so that's the the general idea here so I got a couple of references just to glance at to help me understand what kind of mushroom I'm looking for and then also some desert canyon uh, to help me with getting cliffs and stuff in the distance right so I'm gonna sketch this out uh, just based on what I feel is a decent composition I think I've seen something like this before. This is just for example, it's hardly original. But I think it will serve the purposes that we're doing just fine. So I'll do just this kind of rough sketch. Does not have to be incredibly detailed, especially at this stage. This is going to be my foreground area. And then another one leading the background here, we'll put another sizable mushroom. And before I forget to do anything else, because I'm already starting to lay this out because I'm just kind of working instinctively, my horizon's going to be about right there. So I'll go ahead and sketch that out. Establish the horizon so I have something to work from. So this one's coming down right here. This is a whole other layer to itself. And again, another mushroom kind of on top there. and another one even further in the distance just having these shrink I'm guessing at the sizes I'm not actually going to plot them out with perspective it's a little more complex than I'm wanting to get at this stage but I feel like these are these are in the ballpark and then I'm gonna have my my mountains in the background I want these kind of canyon walls that lead down and again I have my reference photo that I glance at uh, to kind of help with this maybe this comes down right about there at this crook so there's you know something off in the distance and then maybe some nice clouds up in the sky so here's my basic composition here now I'm going to translate this over into the five layers of value uh, so this may take a few minutes to run through but I'm going to go ahead and do it I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name it um, layer one and I'll add on their foreground this is my foremost layer and again what I'm doing when I uh, create these different layers of value I'm essentially painting in the darkest area the darkest shadows of this particular distance as things recede into the background the contrast diminishes so you get darker shadows up front and then as it goes back towards the sky towards the light uh, atmospheric perspective reduces that contrast so this is the way of achieving depth in an image. Switch to a bigger brush to cover some of this faster. At this stage, it being really rough is exactly what I'm looking for. Now one thing to keep an eye on when you're doing this is the navigator up here in the right hand corner that shows the small version of my image that can be extremely helpful for helping you understand how the how the depth is actually playing out so here's my first one this is my darkest layer my foreground layer now I'm going to create another one behind it I accidentally did a group let's delete that another layer behind it using the sticky note button at the bottom this is going to be layer two with this I'm going to take my value and just go up to a charcoal gray rather than black and because it is below my foreground I'll be able to paint directly underneath it ok 
Okay, now moving on to layer 3. Oh, it actually already named itself layer 3. That was convenient. Go move the value up just a little bit further. Make sure it's below. Make sure I have it selected. And then start adding in the value there. This one is kind of small, but it does have a mushroom on it. So I'm going to fill that in. Now for the fourth layer. And it named itself layer four, also convenient. Uh, I actually think I have misjudged a little. I've got a little bit more add to, to layer three. It should be everything backed at this point. There we go. And then to layer four. And then as far as the sky is concerned, that's going to be very close to white. So at this stage, I've got some depth, especially if I look up here at the navigator. I did have another one in here. I'll go ahead and add in an extra mushroom at that level of depth there. So we have a little bit, little bit more going in. Clarify some of that a little bit. There we go. Now I have some, some pretty clear depth coming from this. So that's how it goes in terms of setting up five layers. The fifth layer, of course, is represented by the white in the background. So five layers. At this stage, I can uh, get rid of the sketch, and I'm ready to move on and do detailing uh, on these layers to give them highlight and to give them form, and that's when it really starts to come to life. So that's going to be the next step in the process.